Okay, this is Ms. Carr again, and this is our periodic table of the elements activity that we're going to do with the sub today. Um, your, you should have uh, a worksheet that has your periodic table on one side, um, and it should look like this. This is the actual EOC assessment uh, reference materials. So this is exactly the type of periodic table that you will um, receive when you take your end of course exams. Um, the tax version, if you are going to be taking the tax test, is very similar. So the setup is the same and the information available on the periodic table is the same. So uh, keep in mind that the periodic table does include up here the atomic number. This is the number of protons and um, in a neutral atom, it is also the number of electrons in that atom. Um, this the symbol is the symbol for the element. The atomic mass is, of course, the weighted average of the mass of all of the isotopes of this element. And then you have your name there on the bottom. So uh, quite a bit of information in this particular periodic table. You also have your group numbers as well as the A or B designation, as well as your period numbers, which, of course, correspond to your energy levels in for your electron configurations. So um, what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to flip this periodic table over and on the other side of this periodic table you will find a blank version of the periodic table and this is what we are going to use for our activity today. This is going to give us an opportunity to label the areas of the periodic table and go through a bit of what we learned in um, our earlier video. So um, if you guys will follow along, you can of course rewind or step through these processes. If you did not remember to bring colors to class today, you can do all of the labeling and color it once you get home. But this is a periodic table that should be taped into your uh, notebook or with holes punched in it if you have a binder that um, you will need to keep this on you at all times because you will need to reference this periodic table from time to time within the class. So with, we're, what we're doing here is we're making a tool that you'll be able to use throughout our uh, time in class together. So you're going to take this periodic table, the blank one, and we're going to go step by step through the process of coloring this periodic table. Okay. Um, these are the instructions that we're going to be following. These instructions will also be posted on the website um, as well as this video so that you can go step by step if you don't have a chance to finish this in class today. Of course, if you do finish in class, it is not homework. So I encourage you to get as much done now as you can. This will also allow you to ask any questions or ask the sub to rewind the instructions if you need to. So um, here we're going to start out our instructions on coloring the periodic table. And um, the objective here is to help you learn the parts of the periodic table. So we're going to color and label a blank version. So you're not going to use the EOC version. You're going to flip it over and you do not need to fill in your elemental symbols. So our goal here isn't to, you know, just copy that periodic table over again, but rather to take a look at it in a more broad sense. Okay, the first step that you are going to do is you're going to use a pen uh, or marker or pencil, something to create a bold uh, line for the staircase that separates your metals from your non-metals. And if you guys need to pause here while you take a moment to do that, you can feel free to do that as well. Your second step is to color your metalloids green. Remember that the metalloids are the ones that are touching that line with the exception of aluminum. Okay. And step three, you are going to color your metals yellow. Okay. So all of the metals you're going to color yellow. You're going to color your non-metals red. So keep in mind those the splits in those A groups. You have the metalloids, the metals, and the nonmetals. Then you are going to label your halogens group by writing the word halogen down the column of that group. 
Number six, you're going to label the noble gas group by writing the words noble gas down the column of that group. Then you are going to label your alkali metals by writing the word alkali down the group. Number eight, you're going to label the alkali earth metals by writing the words alkali earth down the group. So that's number eight, okay? Then number nine, you're going to label your transition metals by writing the words transition metals in the section that they occupy on the periodic table. <clears throat> Next, you are going to label the inner transition metals by writing the words inner transition metals into the section that they occupy. Those inner transition metals, remember, are your lanthanide and actinide series. Those are the two that are generally dropped down in your periodic table. Number 11, on the left side of the periodic table, you are going to label the seven periods. Okay. Then you are going to, uh, number 12, label the eight representative elements above their corresponding groups. And again, if you're having trouble with this, you can flip your periodic table over and use that as a reference guide. Okay. So now you should have a colored version of the periodic table with, again, the colors should be your metalloids in green. I'm gonna come back up here number two. Your metalloids in green, your metals in yellow, and your non-metals in red. And you should have the various groups labeled. You should label your halogens, Label your noble gases, your alkalis, your alkali earth, your transition metals, your inner transition metals, also known as your rare earth metals, and uh, the seven periods and the eight representative element groups. So uh, once you have this completed, please make sure that your name is on it in case it falls out of your notebook. We know who it belongs to because you will be expected to keep this copy of your periodic table. And uh, I, will not be, I will no longer be providing periodic tables for your various activities or labs. You need to have this copy with you at all times. So please make sure that you do keep it and keep your name on it and put it somewhere safe um, and easy to access as uh, one of your reference materials for the remainder of this semester, well, for the remainder of this year. Um, please let me know if there's anything that's unclear in these instructions. Um, otherwise, have a fantastic day, and I will see you with your next activity and note um, extravaganza video tomorrow. Uh, thank you guys very much. Bye-bye.